Hey everyone, welcome back. Uh, this will be number 11 in my programming structured text for PLC's video series. Uh, this one, I'm going to wrap up a few things in this program and show off a few other little things I think that uh, you don't really want to miss when you're PLC programming. So some, some things I've seen people's questions on dates and times and, and stuff. So I'm going to make this program a little bit better. This is going to be the last video I think. I'd plan to do some hardware uh, just a little bit of tinkering, but I don't have anything that's real handy, and I'm, I'm just really out of time on this sort of stuff. So uh, if you are interested in some more tutorials on that or anything else, you have some sort of example you'd like to see how I would code it, feel free to ask, and uh, if I get time, I'll make a video on it and just add it as an extra on the series or make a new series or something. So um, anyway, I'd like to make this program a little bit better and show off a few things, so uh, let's hop right in. All right, so one thing I just skipped right over basically is global variables. So we'll go ahead and add some global variables just to make sure we get everything. So let's call this uh, HMI vars. So this might be, you can make kind of call these folders of global variables. So here um, your HMI guy or whatever can, can access these in here. So um, you might have something in here like uh, I state um, is a dent and that's um, my machine state, something like that, so that he knows, and then, you know, B, start, button, uh, boolean, stuff like that. So you're going to have that sort of thing going on in here, probably things that the HMI uh, needs to talk to. Now, a lot of the HMI stuff can reach right in and poke right into your function blocks and all that, but I found it's kind of better to encapsulate this in that way when the HMI person or whoever, if maybe it's you, uh, needs to make changes, you just put everything in there and it, it it's a nice kind of compact place to put them. So that's a good use of globals, I think. Uh, so you can make all your function blocks global, all your everything else could be global. Everything could be global, but that's just kind of bad programming practice, so don't do that. Um, but let's do a uh, ST, uh, or let's do an array of uh, pizza history. So maybe they want to show all the pizzas that have come out of the oven. So um, let's do that, and it's of type uh, ST pizza, right? So. Um, let's make that an array, zero dot dot every single time, zero dot dot, um, 100. It doesn't really matter how big we make it. We have tons of memory, so let's use it. 100 pizzas um, in this array. So where do we want to fill that? We want to basically do the exact same thing I did on the state history. So I'm going to grab this here. But what I'm going to do is come into the state pizza just removed, where we copy it, um, or actually let's do it when we when we remove it off the exit rack. So um, the pizza remove here right before we null it. Let's go ahead and write it to our data. So we will take the done pizza, the size of the done pizza, the address of the done pizza. And then here, this is our global variable stuff. So let's go back and grab the name of that, array pizza history, paste that in, and paste that in. So what this will do is take the data that's stored within the done pizza from the address of where the done pizza's data starts, put it into a buffer of size array pizza starting at the address there. And this function is going to shift everything down and then jam the thing in the top. That was all in the last episode, so go watch that if you're confused by this. So um, we've got that. We've got our whole array of pizzas, so uh, or our array of pizza history, I should call it. They're not actually pizzas anymore. Okay, so we want to add a table to display our new data type. So um, let's come here, toolbox, table a nice big table and we'll just stick it down here um, tell it where the data is HMI vars dot not there dot array of pizza type save that let's try again um, data array HMI vars dot there it is okay whoops array pizza history and that populates everything. So let's see what we got here. Pizza history index, whether it exists or not, is there. Um, date, time of entry, when you make this bigger. 
This can be small. Okay, so anyway, we got our data. It'll show up there. So I'll save this, and uh, this is element zero, and it goes down. Well, I can't tell right now, but it goes down probably to the size of our array. I think it knows that, or we can put it in right there. Um, so let's go ahead and log on and see what it looks like. Ah, all of our array is empty. So, and they were all type cheese because that's our default. So, this would be a good time to have like a enum type unknown or doesn't exist or something. So, either way, let's carry on and uh, see how things go. So, we have made it where when we dump a, pa a pizza out, it should enter our FIFO. So, boom, there it is. I dumped the pizza. It exists in our history still because it existed before we pulled it off. Um, none of this is populated though because we haven't done that. So, uh, it did get type sausage. So let's go ahead and throw one more pizza in. This would be a type, let's see, I forgot what if I hard coded that. I did, so I hard coded sausage every time, but still, that's fine. Our history is working. Um, it's not very useful because we don't have our date and times yet. So let's go figure that out and uh, get those populated in this state machine, and we should be good. All right, so we need to populate those times, and at the moment, our system doesn't handle that. So let's go ahead and put in a function block called nt get time so this actually is part of the tc2 utilities library so you'd need to come in here add library and go pick it that's one of the standard ones they include but i would recommend checking out all the libraries and just quickly looking through what they have so this is a beckoff specific thing so your vendor may have something different or some some other way to get this system time but um, this should get me the local time um, there's lots of other ways to get the time if you need it so um, what you can do is just paste that in and open parentheses and you'll get all these different uh, inputs and outputs another way you can do it is if you hit F2 you can navigate to it and uh, up here in TC utilities you can go find it and it'll throw the entire uh, call signature down there so um, that can be helpful on certain stuff you know anything with this this operator that push I call it pushes it out of the function block that's an assignment so um, it's assigning to other variables and these are inputs here so um, anyway we can actually, let me grab my instance of the function block instead of the definition, we'll just use this. So, time string is what I'm after. That's the actual unit. It's not really a string, it's of type uh, time struct. So let's do a, uh, I'll call that an ST, you can, I guess call it time struct TS, but time struct like it's a structure of uh, current time. And so um, that's gonna be time struct. So that's a, a default data type um, of this library at least. So uh, the problem is I don't really want a time struct. I want a uh, DT. So we'll need to convert that here in a second. But let's go through the rest of this stuff. Error ID and error and busy, we don't really need. I'm going to assume this just works right off the bat for this example. But you want to make sure this function box is a little non-standard from what I'm used to, from back off at least. Um, normally you have a busy and a done. but not busy and started I think is equal to done more or less on this one but either way start needs a rising edge to uh, to begin the sync timeout never hurts to give it a timeout uh, they usually default to something reasonable but um, net ID is uh, it's a lot like an IP address it actually is seeded from an IP address but it's a Beckhoff specific thing I believe that will tell that will point an address through a route a Beckhoff route to a remote system um, or even sometimes in your side your local system it gets really weird but um, anyway all you need to know right now if you have one PLC is null for a net ID means local it's like typing in local host or something like that so a null string is perfect there that's gonna get my own time I could have a time master or something and sync a bunch of PLCs up to it that's how you do it so um, or that's one way to do it I should say uh, ST current time that's what we don't want we want um, DT current time as a DT. So that's a date time structure. I think I talked about those in the past. So um, this will need to do a uh, system time to DT, I want to say. Yes. Um, and it wants its time string in here. So that's this. And good. So that should now populate every time this runs or once it, it takes a few scans for it to, to be correct. But then we should get a current time. So um, let's see if that works. Boom, 2015. So it's 2, 4, um, 
21, 2015. Oh, sorry, I read that wrong. Um, it's 2126, which is 9.34 p.m. or 9.26 p.m. rather on this system. Um, and uh, 2.4 of 2015. So that's the date time structure we want. And uh, now we can start doing some stuff with it. So we know the current time. Where do we want to stick that? Um, we want to know right when a pizza goes in the oven. So wait for the pizza in the oven. We just got a pizza, cook it. So if the pizza in the oven exists, boom, it just started existing. So st pizza in oven dot time entered oven equals dt current time. So this is a dt to a dt, which means we can just copy that thing right in there. So since this only runs once, we'll get the time as it sits currently. So it's kind of a variable we can always use now. So um, that's good. We want to know when it's out of the time, or sorry, out of the, uh, the oven. So pizza just removed on output tray. So we're going to go up a little bit ahead. So if it no longer exists in the done pile, that's the one holding us up. Um, from exiting the oven here. Um, so we say the done pizza equals the pizza in the oven. So right before that, you could either, I mean, it doesn't really matter how you do it, but um, I will set the pizza in the oven's time. Exiting the oven equals the current time. Then we immediately copy that and null it. So like if the order of these changes a little bit, it'll be fine still. Um, anyway, so basically we could set the time out of the oven on the pizza done, but whatever, it doesn't matter, it should work just fine. Um, so the last thing to do here, pizza just removed and it's on the output tray, so we need to calculate that data for it. So um, technically we could do it here, but let, this is a just perfectly fine way to do it here. Um, so the pizza done dot time in oven equals uh, st pizza done dot time exited oven minus st pizza done dot time entered oven and the result of a date time minus a date time is a time variable so we should be able to check that here in a second on our visualization I saved it logging in PLC is running visualization so let's throw some new pizzas in None of this old stuff is done. Um, exit, and now we've got a time. We've got a, an end time, and we don't have this for some reason. So um, it did not care for that. So let's go find out what happened. So we definitely have a problem. Um, I took some time in the cut there to uh, to go and take a look at this uh, FBNT get time, and I actually moved it around for troubleshooting, and I didn't really have much luck. But what's odd is every time I've used this in the past, I actually have a, a functioning project that's using this, just setting this true. And as it's true, it toggles back and forth. And so I'm going to have to investigate that a little bit. But what I did was just, uh, well, let me rephrase that. What was happening was that the uh, these two times were the same so the DT entered the oven and exited the oven so I tracked that back real quick to oh the uh, you know the the function blocks not spitting the time out like it's supposed to so I moved it to main trying to see if uh, maybe it wasn't getting clocked appropriately or something but everything was good it was still messed up and so what I've done is created a little square wave uh, with a 100 millisecond pitch here um, and, or, or period rather um, so I ran that into the start, so it's it's telling it to start and it's updating. So it's like it just ran this once, gave me the time, and that was it. So we could move this into each one of our state machine calls, but I'm just gonna clock it with a square wave for now. 100 milliseconds is plenty of precision. I've never seen it act like that, but either way, let's move on um, and check it out and see how it works. So if I go online now, run the PLC. Um, I also made these global in that effort to figure it out, but you can see now I've got milliseconds counting up. So I won't get more than 100 millisecond precision here now, um, but that's okay. This isn't really a precise data type anyway. Um, so in the pizza, let's go ahead and put one in the oven now. It's cooking.
it's right at three seconds hopefully so I'll package it and boom three seconds even so that's the exact same time um, depending on how you code it you may have a scan or two or something added in here um, but keep in mind that wasn't the timer value that was so like if I put one in put this one in and we let this one burn a little bit let me scroll up pizza's burning so it's sitting here burning we'll remove that one three seconds is all it had but this one boom seven seconds so you can tell it was over four seconds uh, longer than it should have been so you could reject this down the line or something like that so um, anyway that's about it uh, that's all the stuff I wanted to cover um, there's tons more stuff to be done motion uh, servo motion stuff like that but it's kinda hard to uh, show you how to do all that without having hardware handy so uh, if that's something you're interested in let me know uh, via comments or just like this video and I'll know that people want to see more so um, that should be about it that should be a pretty good basic intro to uh, to your PLC programming videos and such um, should get you off and running so uh, hope that was very helpful and uh, and I really wish when I first started I would have had an introduction like this. So that's why I went ahead and made it, and uh, hopefully a lot of people benefit from it. So uh, anyway, subscribe to the channel for more stuff like this, and uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks. All right, one last thing. Uh, I am going to share this code on GitHub. So uh, if you check the description, you can find a link to it if you want to start with this and, and sort of ex extend some of the stuff or you just don't want to retype all my example code or anything just to play with it. So... Uh, Check the description for that, and uh, I'll see you around.